Yeah, I'm wondering what kind of case you'd make to a young person today for why they it would be in their own interest uh, to develop ethics and that, you know, in our culture today, very often ethics are seen as a disadvantage. Right? You're seen as a sucker if you have ethics and your opponent doesn't. Why should an individual even think about developing ethics when, when the real goal, as uh, many would say, would be to succeed, uh, make money, uh, uh, raise a family, buy a nice house? Why is ethics, should, should that even be a consideration? Well, first of all, those things don't necessarily offer happiness or fulfillment in life material possessions, that whole approach to life is not necessarily fulfilling. So basically, we, we're, we're saying that in facing one's defenses, understanding oneself and one's defenses, and learning to face reality and be direct and honest with one another, that this is a sound mental health approach. That is, it's healthy to be kind and generous, compassionate. It feels better. It actually, it, it's, it helps to counteract the negative programming and the self-destructive attitudes that people develop as a result of unpleasant things in their childhood. <clears throat> so basically, to lead an ethical life is, uh, from a mental hygiene standpoint, is, is a positive way of living. Uh, people have been writing about uh, ethics since, since at least the time of the Bible, up through Aristotle, Plato, and right. today we have the, the Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, was a big bestseller. Yeah. How is your approach different from... Yeah, the book is not about uh, the golden rule or uh, how to be a good person you know, on a superficial level. It shows really, it's more analytical, it's more psychologically oriented, it's more, it's based on not a moralistic, judgmental attitude or a, a way of uh, pushing ideas or, or, you know, forcing values on other people. It's more a way of helping people to understand themselves, how they're hurt and how their hurt contributes to hurting others and how there's a cycle that's passed through the generations of certain kinds of ways of perpetuating misery. That, that if looked, if, you know, if the hope is that in understanding these things, we can change them. So it's, it's very different from just stating the generosity, and kindness, compassion are all nice things. It's not setting out to preach. It's more a desire to show how people can cope with negative things in themselves, both for their own benefit and for the benefit of the people closest to them. It's not blaming people for hurting one another. It's an understanding that in our own self-protection we're very hurtful. And very often we lash out toward positive things in our life. We, we distress people. Once we form a defense, we're, we don't, we're un, unwilling to challenge it. We're, we're scared to challenge it because it brings up anxiety. And uh, so if we have suspicious attitudes, we want to maintain them. We want to maintain them because we're afraid of getting hurt again. We don't want to be hurt again. But in the process, we may very well ward off something very positive. In fact, most people can't tolerate a compliment without some sort of comeback or diluting it or twisting or bending away from it. Uh, surprisingly, we avoid positive things as well as negative things. We have a certain tolerance level. We live in a certain equilibrium of what we can tolerate in the way of emotional gratification. So we want to, in the book, we want to challenge the distorted ways that people pretend to love and the ideologies, uh, for example, of religious ideologies that, that you know, uh, attempt to lead, uh, present a, a way of living a good life. But in practice, people are killing each other over these issues. They're starting off with good values and tearing each other apart. So we're, we're pointing out the contradictions in, in other ways of just accepting principles without understanding their meaning and their derivation and what it means to people on a defensive level. So it's a very different approach than just outlining positive ways to be. It shows how and why and, and what ways we, we do hurt each other and how these defenses operate. And then it shows how you can challenge them.
Basically, I think if we don't come to understand ourselves, we're going to destroy ourselves. Because with increased technology, you have better weapons and better ways of hurting other people, destroying life. And without rationality and, and understanding, and uh, I think it's inevitable that we will, you know, destroy our life on the planet. So ultimately, I, my faith is that with an understanding, we can cope with some of these issues that are destructive, both on a simple level, person to person, and hopefully ideologically on a world level. We're all fragile, we're all going to die ultimately, we're all alone, we're all unique in that sense and separate. And it's tragic, you know, that, that we can't feel for each other. We're a traumatized animal, we're a frightened animal, aware of our own destiny. And the defenses we have to deal with that anxiety very often make us destructive.